Um, oh, their eyes are open. They open their eyes and like, holy smoke, we're in some. There's the king of. How did this happen? So then the king goes, they're in my hands. Elisha, should I kill him? Should I take them all? They're all in my hands. Elisha says, are you kidding me? Here's the Yeshua foreshadow. Go prepare a meal for them. Go prepare a meal. Go prepare a feast. Go sit down with them and have a snack. A big feast. So they all ate together. Is that crazy? Like the two of the, you know, armies that are in conflict with each other, they're sitting there having a meal together. <laughs> and it says that the, ar the army of Aram went away after the meal, went away, and never bothered Israel again. Amen. Spiritual battle happening on behalf of his people. And it's happening on behalf of us. Because we are grafted in to Israel. Whether we are natural branches from the lineage or whether we're wild branches that are grafted into the same tree, the armies of God are fighting, are warring. And when we see craziness, even in this country, there is spiritual activity going on. I and I open up our eyes to see what you are doing above and beyond the insanity down here. In the beginning, God also said, let me separate the waters from above, the waters of above from the waters of below. The waters from above are the living waters of Yeshua. The waters of below will drown you, will kill you, will bring you into a whirlpool. Help us, Adonai, as the, world, the waters of the world are tumultuous, Help us out and I to stay in the waters of heaven, the living waters of heaven where Yeshua is. Help us to operate from there. Help us to see what you are doing from there. So I want you to know that even though God battles on behalf of Israel, it's not just a national thing, it is a personal thing. Daniel was in Babylon, he was part of the captives. That were, that, were, that, were, that were kicked out by force by God from Egypt and went to Babylon and they had to live there for 70 years. And it says that Daniel went into a time, a three-week time of, of fasting and of mourning. And it's interesting, three weeks, he wouldn't eat food. It's interesting, it says that the fast ended on the 24th day of the first month. That means he did all this through Passover, which is all in the first month. He skipped Passover. Because Passover is the time that you eat lamb. And Passover is the time that you drink wine. But he didn't do any of that during his time of fast. So it's really interesting in that way. But he was fasting and mourning for three weeks. And then it says that at the end of that, after 21 days, it says that an angel came to visit him and said that I've been wanting to come with you since day one of your fast. But for three weeks I was held up by the prince of Persia. For three weeks. So don't think if you are in a, you're in a place where you're like on your face or you're, 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 you know, you're humbling yourself and you think it's just you. Know that there is warfare happening in the heavenlies. That you, your prayers are being heard. It says right from the day that he humbled himself that the angel wanted to go and give him a word. But he was held back by the prince of Persia which is obviously a dark force. For three weeks, and then another angel, Michael, had to come and take care of the battle so this other guy can go and give a word to Daniel. This is what it says. It's an amazing thing. But I share this, not to just give a lot of explanation of what's happening, just to, so you know and be encouraged that Adonai is at war in heaven, that his angels are, in char are warring on behalf of Israel, on behalf of you, and your prayers are heard. And, you, you know, you're, you're humbling yourself and everything that you do, these things are heard. These things are heard. And then after the angel came, he says, okay, i got to go back to the prince of Persia. And then the prince of Greece is on his way. And that was clearly a prophecy because Greece wasn't yet the, 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 a kingdom, like an empire. That's the first time we even hear of Greece in the Bible. So there is so much happening. 
in the spiritual realm. So be encouraged that Adonai is fighting. Adonai is in charge. Adonai has said his angels, the Psalms say that his angels in camp around those who fear him. That's a revelation, that's a mystery, that's a connection to the tabernacle because you have the tabernacle was the Mishkan and you had all the people of Israel encamped around it and Adonai is saying that the angels, he puts angels encamped around those who fear him. Psalm 91 says, Look at you in the tell me. Angels take charge. Say it again. He commands the angels to take charge over you so you won't hit your foot against a stone. So, Father, we thank you, Adonai, that you are in control, that you are doing incredible, incredible things. You, Father, in the heavens, there is, there is warfare happening in the heavens. And, Father, help us to understand that you are on our side that all things happen for your good, for your glory. Help us to understand, Adonai, that nothing is happening that we see that is by accident. Help us to understand that nothing is by accident. Nothing is by accident. There's so much turmoil, and especially in election cycles, there's so much turmoil. There is nothing happening that is outside of his control. He is the God who goes over chaos and speaks, let there be light, yet he or. And if we don't see it in the natural, we need to pray the prayer of Elisha, say, out of thy, open my eyes so I see that there's more with me than there are with them. There's more with us than there are with them. Father, you are a great and mighty and awesome God. <laughs> and you will not rest until your glory covers the entire earth. That's the strategic plan. How you execute that plan is your business. Just help us, Father, to be your, your soldiers down here as you need it. There was another time in American history that was where America was full of turmoil. I was just uh, watching a documentary on, it was a few years ago, maybe 40 years ago, it was the time of uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was a very, very popular president. I think in 1972 he won like 48 out of 50 states or something like that. You know, promised to bring an end to the Vietnam War. But then all of a sudden something happened. Some CIA folk got caught, you know, going into the Watergate Hotel, stealing some documents from the DNC, from the forerunners of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And the war on the, the America was in turmoil. It was an just incredible controversy that was happening in our in our country at this time. And and and, and Nixon was going nuts. I'm not a crook, I'm not a crook. I mean, he was going crazy almost. And it just plagued him. This controversy plagued his presidency. All of a sudden, in the middle of this whole controversy, on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, 1973, right in the middle of this hell that was going on in this country, Egypt and Syria and Arab countries sneak attacked Israel. On Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when all Israelis are not eating, they're mourning, they're fasting. In like their weakest state. And Egypt and Syria go in and attack Israel and other Arab countries attack at that time. And, and Israel was being defeated. And like it, it got to this point where uh, Golda Meir, who was the Prime Minister at the time, yes, female, we preceded the American thing by a generation. Um, you know, it was actually, it, was, it said that she had like poison pills. She was ready to take it if she was captured. But all of a sudden, in the, in, the, in the middle of this attack, when Israel was being defeated, and every time Israel was attacked, there was a spiritual warfare happening. Because every attack on Jerusalem, is a, there's a spiritual warfare happening as well. And then all of a sudden, at 3 in the morning, she calls up this beleaguered president, Richard Nixon. And she said, man, 
We really need some arms. Or we're not going to make it. And this beleaguered president, who wasn't exactly friendly to Jews, I mean, it's documented that he was saying, like, don't trust the Jews. It's written. Like, the Jews in his, in his cabinet, like Kissinger, like, don't, we can't really trust them too much. Like, not nice things about Jewish people. Gets a call from Golda Meir. Golda Meir says, we need some arms or else we're, we're goners. And he fulfills that promise and sends loads of arms to Israel and enabled Israel to stave off the attack and to remain a nation. Ten months later, he stepped down as president. So in the middle of all the craziness, the chaos, the insanity, the whirlwind of the waters of below, Adonai had a plan, because there was also battle happening in the heavenlies. And he used this one beleaguered president. And I'm not saying he was a good guy or a bad guy, and I'm not saying anything about him, but whoever he was and wherever he was, and where, at what, whether he was a faithful man or just a not a faithful man. God used him in a moment to save Israel from destruction. In the middle of all this chaos that was happening in this country, God saved Israel because he is warring on Israel's behalf and warring on our behalf because we have accepted his son into our hearts. The king of Israel lives in our hearts. So be encouraged. Weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty for God, for the pulling down of strongholds. We don't wage war against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. We just entered into the fifth month on the Jewish calendar, the month of Av, and it's a pretty devastating month in history. If you look in the Bible and in history. Solomon's temple was destroyed on the ninth of this month. Herod's temple was destroyed on the ninth of this month. Both temples were destroyed. Both temples in Jerusalem were destroyed on the exact same day in this month. The ninth of Av. Today is the second of Av. So that would be Saturday. Coming Saturday. But it says in the book of Zechariah that the fast, that the morning day on the fifth month will become a day of celebration and rejoicing for Israel, for Judah. But I feel led at this time as the waters of the world are turning. And the, it's turning into a whirlwind, a, 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 I'm not even sure what the word is. And it's trying to suck everybody down into a fist fight with each other. The month of Av is actually the, the, the first look we have into the autumn festivals, and I, I can't stand that. Because, like, it's, it's summertime, it's nice out. But now all of a sudden, this month of Av comes, and it's like, oh my gosh, we're two months away from Rosh Hashanah. Oh my gosh. Next month is the month of Elul, which is a real month of, of, of soul searching and repenting and making things right. So let's pray. Can we stand together and just can we pray?